Hello and welcome to the Iron Lung Podcast with me, Leo. And me, Aspid. And me, Leo. We are joined today by our one-of-a-kind co-host, Luke Simmons. Say hello to us, Luke. Hello. Mr. Part-time. Mr. Part-time. Mr. Worldwide Pitbull. No difference there, then. <laughs> He's never here, is he? Nope. And we're also joined by our good friend, Lewis Fordham, also known as Panda. It, I just seen the shock in your eyes when I called you Lewis Fordham. You was it's like... a bit weird hearing it, but <laughs> yeah. everyone in Glasgow calls me Lewis now. Really? So. Is it? Yeah, yeah. No yeah. way. Aye. Uh, Did you introduce yourself as Panda or Lewis? I generally introduce myself as Lewis, but certain people know that my nickname is Panda and they still just call me Lewis. Really? So. Just Sunday mad. name. Look, so, my girlfriend doesn't even say my name. <laughs> what did she say? Dickhead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. What are you doing? <laughs> Basically, yeah. No, uh, no, think of it. I don't really know. Uh, just, uh, yeah. just mind, mind, man. So, speaking on the name Panda, um, I wanted to start it on a nice little icebreaker and introduce yourself a little bit more. Um, where does the nickname Panda come from? Um, there's no real origin to it. Like, everyone thinks like, it might be just a fancy thing or something. Um, or it's related to something. But someone in school, I think it was year eight, just said to me, Panda. And then from there on, uh, it just kind of stuck. It like, was just there. Like, like uh, Nick's names, uh, Nicholas Paul Y. Browsing Abella, Treat or like Martin. He has a bet. He had a bet. Oh, by the way, we're joined by Nick Martin in a leasing with uh, St. Michael behind the hand as well Nick. today. Three he had um, St. Michael here. He had a, yeah, three fourths of St. Michael here today. Um, he had about eight million nicknames in high school. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I didn't go to Accrington Academy, but you both did, didn't well, you? Well, I actually went to Riddens for about six months. Oh, yeah, of course. Months. You yeah, did. I went to Riddens for about six months. That's how I know your brother. Yeah. Um, and then. It was a shit also left. It is a shit also. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Nick, do you remember all your nicknames? Do you remember a couple of them? Do he does. Me? He just doesn't want to say anything. Why ban? Because he had a BT internet. Why ban? That's some <laughs> Wi-Fi related shit in it. Surely. Oh, it's because it's because of the sets at school. It's because like, he did B- top BT sets. Right. Oh, he was in Why ban. Oh, Why ban? <laughs> no, I get it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's 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 so funny. I've X- never realised that. X ban was like top sets. Why ban was like you know. Both <laughs> sets. <laughs> <Like, laughs> that's why yeah. you were called <laughs> Nicholas Why <Wyband>. ban. <laughs> <laughs> you absolute weapon. <laughs> you absolute weapon. <laughs> that's well funny. That's actually so funny. Why'd you have to do him like that? Yeah, you did him He's not even on the camera yet. Yeah. And we're back. Hey. Sorry about that. We just had a bit of a technical difficulties there. Um, the, the blessings of Nick. Just blessings of us Nick up. Martin. Why? B Tech got to us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, obviously, uh, uh, Iron Lung staple is to have beer of the week, and uh, uh, you are our first guest on the show that is um, sober. So or a boring. Cunt. No, not boring. <laughs> cunt, not boring cunt at all. Nah. Um, we are gonna, in your honour, drink zero percent this week for about ten minutes. Joe's got some actual beers here. Of course he does. <laughs> of course he does. But um, we're gonna, we're all gonna like have a zero percent in honour of our good friend Panda. <coughs> um, so I, we have kindly brought Brooklyn Special Effect, which is one of your favourites. It's one of my favourites. When I found it, I was very happy because it yeah. tastes like Blue Moon. Which Does I it? Quite liked. Have, have you had it before? I've never had it before. I've had Blue Moon, but I've never ever had Brooklyn special effect. But I'm a big fan of Brooklyn. I came preferred, my man. Always got a bottle. Like have way. you three always all got one on your keys? Yeah. Am I the only one? I thought I thought you was fucked for having one on your on your on your no, car keys. Got every, every good man yeah. has a bottle opener on his car. I've keys. got yeah. three sets of keys, and each one has I a bottle. I'm supposed to drink and drive. <laughs> and that, that's funnily enough. That's what my keying says. It says don't drink and drive. Oh, yeah, because they're the room key ones, aren't they? Yeah, they're, to be fair, yeah, it does say they're don't, think, drink, don't drink and drive. Well, I mean, uh, theoretically, I am a bartender, so Probably there's none around that always got one on me. going to be going skits. Oh, wow. I... It does taste like Blue Moon, though, yeah, right? It's yeah, it's not bad at all, I actually. mean, you could, you could probably drink this and drive, so... Yeah, um, I had... Uh, right in Scotland, you can't, because I think this is 0.4. Yeah, 0.4. Yeah. Scotland, you can't have can't any get away with it. system. That's so. crazy. There you go. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah, I was speaking the other day, because obviously you can have a beer and still drive here, but you were saying in Glasgow, the super... Um, yeah, like, people have been done from, like, getting a bit too messy the night before and then driving, because um, they, they knuckled down on alcohol. Well, they tried to knuckle down on alcoholism in there because everyone's a pish head <laughs> if you don't know what pish means it means piss there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish slang of the week yeah. Scottish slang of the week Scottish slang of the week yeah you we're might get a few slang. more Scottish slang in. Scottish slang of the week we'll come back to that in a we'll minute. call it patter as well uh, <laughs> you might get a few more doubled in because I've kind of started picking up the lingo um, how long have you been in Glasgow for now officially two years so nice. the 18th of this month was two years I've, nice. I've been living there um, nice. good riddance 
Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Well, yeah, I say good riddance to this place, not to That's the what people, I'm saying. maybe. But, um, yeah, so the, the, there's a real alcohol problem in Glasgow. Anyone who's met a, a lot of Glaswegians might know how bad they are for the drink. Mm. Um, so there's no public drinking at all. You can't buy alcohol in any shops after 10 o'clock. Really? Uh, that's, yeah, that's a thing. They've started implementing it in England in certain areas, so Manchester and all, like, certain shops, they'll close off the alcohol section. And you can't get it. Did not know that. Um, but it, they're, they're pretty staunch on it. But it didn't combat it, so they tried uh, doubling the prices of, like, premium alcohol or, like, Frosty, so like, jacks, like, frosty jacks fucking uh, 16 like quid or something fuck fast yeah it's bottle, like triple yeah. the price really? yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. that would be just more like spirits like liqueurs sort of thing no so it's the cheap oh, yeah. stuff yeah. Right. oh right so like like how 4 quid for a 2 litre bottle or some shit yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so up there it'll be about 8 quid yeah um, like up to it hell. big time um, it didn't do anything basically all they did was it just raised the amount of money people were spending on alcohol yeah. that's, that's the way to boost yeah. your economy people. Yeah, but they did do that with cigarettes anyway as well don't yeah, they yeah, it's, it's, the way they it's basically the same, the same yeah. concept yeah, but they just don't give a fuck up there like, fucking hell that's madness and so is that in bars as well or is no, that so, just office so it's weird like bars there's certain bars in Glasgow that are open until 3 in the morning and you can drink all night long and the place I work it's a 24 hour bar so there's certain ways around it, but shops, they will not sell you any alcohol after 10 o'clock. Same, crazy. all over Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much all, yeah. all over Scotland. Like, the only place where the, the whole drinking in the street thing comes to an end is Edinburgh. Edinburgh yeah. And it's just because they've got Fringe Festival every year, which yeah. is Like a huge. loophole in the law. It's, it's a loophole. Yeah. They, found, they basically found yeah. a loophole so for this you festival. You can just like walk around with open carrying, you know. Open yeah. carrying alcohol. Yeah. Open I, um, carrying alcohol. <laughs> <I did laughs> not, that, not a weapon. <laughs> I did that once in Leeds, you know, it was slam dunk. And uh, we were one of the years when um, I went, I went with Josh and not you, and we was walking around Leeds. We like, uh, like obviously drinking tinnies, and uh, I was like, "We not get fucked for this." He's like, "Nah, police have got better things to do than fucking stop people yeah, yeah. drinking tinnies." Like, it's a student city. Like, it's one of them, isn't it? It's it happen, yeah. It's, it's a madness. Um, so while we touch on Glasgow, I've got an interesting question for you. Um, would you rather shave off your beard or move back to Ozzle Swizzle? Uh, probably shave off my beard. I can grow my <laughs> beard back. Oh, see, no, 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 no. I'm going to be clean really shaven really for the rest so you of your life. Be, you can never grow your beard again. Oh, I've never, I've never seen you without a beard either. No, like, never, never I, ever. You've had, it. you've had a beard since you was about 15, I think it was. Came out of the womb with it. Yeah, I just waltz out my mum like, you right, lads. But no, that's a hard question. I've kind of, I think I'd probably have a heart attack if I see myself without a beard right now, but... I love it up in Glasgow. Like I just love living up there. It's it's a much better life. Even the junkies are nice up there. <laughs> 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 like that's a genuine thing. So like in Manchester, if you don't give a homeless man a bit of change, even if you don't have any, they'll probably spit at you. I'm pretty sure you can vouch for me. Manchester pretty bad yeah, for that they'll shit. They probably nick your wallet. Um, like. Yeah, you'll get your wallet nicked by a prostitute. <laughs> uh, but- I hope your mum's not watching this. <laughs> Nick, you're a dirty man. <laughs> I, yeah. no, he wasn't born no, no, in the that, with, Without but, context, yeah, without, oh, context, without context, that context, sounds, it sounds uh, way worse than it is. Can yeah. I, can I uh, just add something before we go on? There's a really funny, funny picture that Nick left in his old apartment, a Polaroid of him <laughs> with, uh, oh, with, yes. is with, uh, with, it, with uh, a, a fanny dick, is that what we're going to call so it? A mangina? Yeah, it's a tuck, it's a drag tuck. It's where you do the double up and tuck. Yeah, so our good pal over here, the ever so impressive Nick Martin, in, took a Polaroid of him doing that exact motion, <laughs> posted it underneath the carpet in his apartment. Am I right? And left it there. And left it there. He, why? And then you went to so a party. <laughs> just, for, just for someone else to yeah. find. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. You uh, <laughs> went back a year later, didn't you? And you checked it. It was still there, aye? Do you have a picture of it? <laughs> if I censor it, can <laughs> yeah, I throw it up on you screen? Do. You've got a picture of it. You can censor you it. Don't, you shit, don't yeah. have to show us now. I'll put it up in post. Send it me and I'll, I'll put it on, but I'll censor it. It is a genius for all, to be oh, fair. It is brilliant. I think that's probably... So, um, if, if Nick allows me, there we go. Wow, look at Nick's mangina right there. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, yeah. fucking Genuinely, round of applause yeah, for that. I can nearly lick it. <laughs> <laughs> I taste it as well. <laughs> so, um, so, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, so, so no, beard say, or, no beard or nozzle twistle. I don't know. Like The biggest issue for me is I miss people. I miss you lot obviously and i miss a lot of my family well, i say a lot all of my family <coughs> um because they're all like living in this area or not far away um but glasgow man it's 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 a wonder place like i i fell in love with the place before i even moved there that's why i moved mm. there um and i think all oh, you fuckers need to take a road trip up there like yeah pretty sure i don't know why we haven't yet well we'll wait for covid to fuck off it. i yeah. believe there was plans getting made for it to happen yeah. but um yeah. 
Yeah, you should come up like Beard and uh, Glasgow. Beard's got to go. Beard's got to go. Really? Really, yeah. I really? love it though, man. Oh, I love mate, it. you without a beard is we'll do you, not something I ever want to see. Well, that's the thing. We'll no, do your no deal. Fucking knows me up we'll there do your anyway, deal. So You've got to live in East Kilbride and you can have sideburns. <laughs> when you live in, <laughs> <laughs> like, in, in Glasgow, then you've got it, the beard's got to go. Well, like, the further away from Glasgow you get, the, the more, more the beard you get. Keep. It's just like a magic yeah. thing as well, like some like curse like, type shit. Yeah, so you, right. if you're you driving back, you're going, fuck! And it just don't I can back. keep my sideburns then, because I don't actually live in Glasgow. I live in a place called Paisley. If anyone yeah, knows yeah. about Paisley, shit's all. But it's <laughs> nice. Like, there's nice areas to it, and I love where I live. Um, again, going back to these nice junkies that are there. Like, instead of spitting at you if you don't have money, they're just like, God bless you, and walk off. Um, but Paisley's got some interesting characters, man. Like I went to the to Paul Summit around Christmas, and I'm just always going to remember this shit. This guy went in before me. He was pure junkie. Like he was like hunched over and going in, mask barely on his face, and he's just. I l- noticed his jeans, like his back pocket was re- hanging off, <laughs> like, like some cunt's <laughs> collared him, um, and he was just like, "Yeah, mate, you, you forgot my receipt," and he's just like, "No, I give it to you," and he's just like. <laughs> and walked off like that's literally all the dude got from him like the mental it's a great place though I remember um, yeah it basically was that's basically how the junkies talk like. yeah, have you got any of them just put a cup of you lad <laughs> I was I was watching a documentary um during the first lockdown and it was about like kids in in Glasgow uh, or maybe not just Glasgow but in Scotland in general right. that are obviously living in like Places of like where kids, what is fucking cold where kids go when they don't have parents? Fucking oh, well, they do have parents, but like yeah, like foster in homes, foster yeah, homes, yeah, yeah, Tracy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy Beaker. <laughs> <laughs> right, just because I want a Tracy Beaker, you fucking started, yeah, bastard. Um, and yeah, and they, there was like this one, like talking about kids that are like 14 and they're like on like class A drugs and they're yeah, like yeah, doing yeah, mad yeah. shit. And like some of the scenes they show, like mad like you you wouldn't expect it because like from what i've seen on pictures and stuff like glasgow is a beautiful city oh so yeah like glasgow's a beautiful city there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of old buildings which is like it's red stone so it it's, looks old but nice um but a lot of these documentaries don't tell you that you don't actually see a lot of the the like crazy shit that much like yeah. manchester i didn't really feel safe walking through at night with earphones in or anything or headphones on glasgow i'll do that any time of the day i mean i went night shift there um, so I walk through there most nights with headphones in. Like it's a cool city. I feel safe there. Yeah. You don't really see that much shit. Um, that's more like in places like Paisley, or where you live. Where I live, which <laughs> but not the area where I live. So the area where I live's all right. It's quite yeah. quiet. Um, but like you can go to like Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock's got a bit of a reputation. East Kilbride, which uh, big man over there mentioned. Um, Yorker. East Kilbride's a pretty. Yorker. <laughs> 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 no other business than, being in Yorker. Other yeah. than Lee's <laughs> show, I don't know much about Yorker. I don't think there's much there. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they, I've heard they've got, um, obviously, Yorker FC and uh, yeah, Les yeah. Porter, her by Les Porter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But other the, than that, there's, I don't think there's much there. Um, like, I mean, where I lived before was rougher, so I lived in a place called Rutherglen, and after the first week of living there, someone was stabbed right outside of our flat, um, and then a week later, someone was stabbed at the train station about 10 minute walk away and then some some nice. other f- poor fucker got run over i think it was something to do with celtic rangers usually is um, <laughs> old firm old firm kind of thing yeah. but like rutherland's pretty rough and then I, I lived in a bit of a posh area didn't really like it though it's a bit too posh for me like, i used yeah. to get judged quite a lot as you can imagine and now i live in paisley with my girlfriend we moved in together that's that's why i'm there but i love it though i love it we've got yeah. our own little flat it's it's a cool place Cushy. yeah yeah I remember um, speaking to Josh about Glasgow because he'd been up and he said like it was like oh yeah definitely go up and even Tash because Mark's wife's half Scottish half German right she was like they're both like Glasgow is beautiful just don't go in it when when I uh, uh, fucking Celtic game on Celtic whatever fuck is Celtic, that, right? Celtic so Celtic Celtic don't say Celtic yeah well, fucking you'll probably get stabbed for yeah, that yeah, yeah. well Celtic. I've actually got exactly like that so they weren't playing but the other week was Saturday yeah uh, not this one gone the week before um I was going to work and. Rangers had won and they'd had the last game of the season. Yeah, they won the league, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. they won the league um, in the like, first time in like 10 years or something mm-hmm. like that. So they went to George Square, which is kind of like in the city. Uh, it's like a really nice little, just little thing. Um, there's benches, like mm-hmm. memorial benches and shit. Um, 
And they just went and basically caused the shit, like, lots of shit. I'm sure it was meant for good intentions just to celebrate, but COVID's still a thing, yeah. so you really shouldn't be doing that bullshit. Um, and that was early in the day. That was, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm going to work. I think I get off the train at about 20 to 11, because I start yeah. at 11. Where about you working? Are you, like, in Glasgow, like, in the city? So I'm in Merchant City, which is kind of, like, further in. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's a bit further out. It's like kind of. So do you know where the Strathclyde is? The university. Yeah, I don't know where. It you is, don't know. So it's know. near the university, basically. If anyone knows Glasgow, yeah, you, know where you went is. to do um, interior architecture there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, it's funny you should say about redstone. You know, like when you're yeah, talking about the buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I love them Akino eyes, mate. You fucking love the little brick. eyes. I brought them up to my girlfriend. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, strongest brick in the world. Strongest brick in the world. There you go. Blocks your Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> those yeah, actually, those, those houses. Those, my my house is all right. The internet is dog shit if you're upstairs. Um, sorry what was you saying so what was I saying so yeah uh, there was thousands upon thousands of them and then like I was walking usually I can cut through straight uh, through Buchanan Street which is kind of like the centre of the Mm. city and there was just hundreds of riot police so I can get through and I was just like for fuck's sake I'm gonna go all the way round and then I walked past Queen Street which is kind of where it was all kicking off and there was still like maybe a thousand people just crammed into the street at like fucking quarter to eleven at night yeah and at the same time, my girlfriend was sending me videos. We didn't really want to see him shit me up a little bit. Just people beating each other up. But they're all what? the same fans. It's not even like just Ranger Celtics fans. Infighting. They were just pissed yeah. up and fucking beating each other up. Yeah. Right. So it was it was a weird one. It was definitely interesting. So, yeah. That shit's still a thing. And I didn't think it was still as serious yeah. as it was, but it fucking is. Like, yeah. That, obviously, like, the football fans over here and they are a bit like rowdy sometimes but you never see rarely see like riots and like I, it doesn't, shit like it, that it's not even close to rivaling what it's like between literally just celtic and rangers mm. just celtic the yeah. other teams aren't really rowdy yeah no, no. it's, it's like it's you, deep, get, you get some it? fucking derbies over here like blackburn burnley is always a bad one then like leeds coming to anywhere like manchester or blackburn is generally quite bad <laughs> But nothing compares to Celtic and Rangers. No, it's fucking ridiculous. It's overworldly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the deep, rest of the league is just rooted, vibing, being shit, and then Celtic and Rangers are just <laughs> going at each other. Mother yeah. Western. <laughs> it kind of doesn't help the fact that like Rangers and Celtic are always going to be the ones that win it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, the only yeah. two yeah, 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 yeah. level football. Like yeah, I don't are. like football, but I know about it. Yeah, just being there. So they're like Premier League football teams. Like they're good, and every other team just dog shit. Yeah, I'm very ill knowledge when it comes to football. Is Genuinely, the the rivalry just because they're both the two best teams and they just... No, so it's a deep-rooted thing in Scotland. So, uh, you know about, like, Catholicism and Protestant yeah, yeah, branches yeah. of, like, Christianity. Well, it was bad in Ireland. It was also bad in Scotland. Um, so, Scotland, and that's where it comes from. So, Celtic's, like, the Catholic team. Yeah, they were, they were founded by Irish. So, it's, it's yeah. a religion thing. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's like, it's like a mixture thing. because of, like, the areas in which Fucking the teams religion. are... Heavy, it's Irish heavily like Protestant or yeah, heavy, yeah, heavy yeah. like yeah. Uh, it's Catholics. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. So like, I'm not religious anyway. I'm, I I identify as agnostic. So like, I don't really agree with anything. Or, but I can't necessarily say there is something, or can't say there isn't anything. Yeah. Because uh, I think that's a bit more of a logical step. I kind of like to be logical about things. Makes sense. Um. It's logical. So yeah, if anyone asks logical. you when you're up there, just say like I'm atheist or if you are like yeah. religious just kind of stay off the subject because certain yeah. people will still yeah. like just buy you for no reason they might buy you like i've never witnessed it myself but like i've had people even like ask me where i'm from in like trying to be like a bit of an intimidating way yeah are they, from england are they still yeah, yeah, but then like, yeah. when you when they find out where i'm from in england they're like oh, you're like, in is that yeah. so is that a, a thing as well like, i know they're not the the, the fondest it's not ones. so there's a bit of a misconception there as well the, the misconception is that they just hate english people because of like the william wallace and stuff like that but it's not true uh they hate the uk government because they basically get told what they have to do by the uk government and it's not necessarily what they agree with mm. Um, so it's the government they hate with, hate on, and like I explain to any Scottish person if they, they they talk to me about it, like I'm not scared of, I, I won't jump around that subject because I'm not, I don't like our government, I'm I'm not a conservative because they purely like they think about themselves as like they they think as the best way of describing it is they think of England as London, they only really care yeah, about uh, London. You look what happens up here. The go, a lot of funding has been pulled, a lot of bullshits yeah, happened yeah. over the years. London, they get everything. So they kind of get on the same wavelength as you, and they realise that like, like I love Scottish people. Like I mean, of course, I'm with my girlfriend, she's Scottish. <laughs> like, 
fucking otherwise I'd be fucked. Um, and I think England as a whole need to get this stereotype out of the head of like Scottish people are like really angry, really English hating people because it's not true. Yeah, like they're just lovely, great yeah. people. Up there. Yeah. You, obviously you're gonna get some dickheads, but you get dickheads Everywhere. wherever you've got. Yeah, yeah, I I personally love, um, if not Scottish culture, I love Glaswegian culture. Mm. Like I love it that like. For, we're always on about Limmy. Yeah. I'll always go on about Limmy because he's yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. comedian, and I I absolutely just love him. I just find him absolutely hilarious. Um, and obviously, as you know, I'm coming up to Glasgow in August to get tattooed off um, Paul Clavey, uh, King of Bones, and I'm so excited. And from what I've spoken to him, he's the nicest guy ever. Yeah, he's, they generally he's are. So like... sound, but he looks he looks like a menacing <coughs> motherfucker. He's called King of Bones for fuck's sake, yeah, but he's yeah. the nicest guy I love ever. His tats, man. Uh, he's like, so good. I cannot cool. wait. To there's get definitely off him. there's there gonna be some things because you're quite tall, so. Uh, if someone calls you big man, they're not being disrespectful. It's just because you're tall. Yeah. Like, I remember the first time someone said it to me and I was like, because I'm from here, I was just like, are you getting cheeky? Yeah, yeah. Like, instantly in my head, I'm like, is this guy starting? But no, it's, it's a term of endearment. It's yeah. just, you're right, big man. Um, but yeah. the, the generally, the lovely yeah. people. Like, everyone wants to get drunk as well, so. Yeah, I'm always up for that. Exactly. Definitely. <laughs> um, on this year, No, not tonight. Yeah. Uh, not until what, Joe breaks out. Yeah, yeah, we got, we got Tinny's over here. Yeah, fucking courtesy of Joe. So we're going to do a second beer of the week. Um, but. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, touching on sort of Spanish patter. Uh, Spanish. Spanish, Spanish patter. Spanish, I'm thinking about you. Scottish patter. Um, what are some like terms and phrases that are sort of like sort of you you hear quite frequently in glasgow that you wouldn't have over here like we say like scram which is obviously like food and you have like believe it or, and shit like that like yeah it's believe not like, it or not they use scram up there i hate the word i despise the word scram. Hell, scram <laughs> <thinks> <laughs> well fucking funny. turn it <laughs> makes <laughs> my tails curl you want to go up to <laughs> scram man yeah i'll fucking meet you there pub in 10 yeah i don't fucking like it. it so they, they do use what the word scram um so it's stuff like pish which obviously i've already explained pish. i say it a lot like that's entered my vocabulary uh some of them might say jobby uh, do you know what it means? It means shit. Oh, it means shit. Yeah. So it means taking shite. a shit. So like, <laughs> oh, Joby, you got shit go in your mouth. <laughs> like, um, canny, obviously. Everyone says canny, but that just means, like, can't. Or, mm. you, 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 yeah, it's that kind of thing. Uh, Joby. There's, there's all sorts, man. It's, sun's out, gun's out. That's kind of a thing up there. Uh, so that just means fucking get your tank it's, top it's, on. It's warm, get your, get your top, top off, off, even right. if you're a fat cunt. Um, <laughs> I don't do it, because I'm a fat cunt. Uh... <laughs> You got, um, I've actually got a mug that's got loads of fucking Scottish slang on, so I shouldn't know this. Um, Jobby, uh, Wean. Oh, he's a little kid. No, you turned the Wean's against us. He's turned the Wean's against us. Um, <laughs> basically, anything you hear on Limit, that is, <laughs> like, <laughs> Limit. And all of them. <laughs> yeah, you basically know all of them. What's, like, your, what's your favourite? What's your hang? What's, 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 <laughs> yeah. um, what's my favourite? I like pish bork. I like bork a lot. Bork yeah. means fucking gag. Dry bork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you fucking make it. You're giving me the bork. Um, <laughs> that's pretty fucking funny. That's that's one like fucking disgusting. Bogging's pretty good. That just means disgusting. So like, that's fucking bogging. That is. <laughs> nah, actually, we need to speak about the whole. <sighs> right. So canal hunt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> barge hunt. So obviously, you're a massive fan of metal, like probably the biggest i've ever met like you even called me and draw pussies for the metal we listen to like probably yeah, yeah, yeah. so like even the metal we like is Elitist. like fuck it's, it's, like, like, one, no. it's like one direction so to I, I used to be i used to be pretty bad for that but i think um everyone everyone enjoys what they enjoy and i think there should be less elitism within metal because i think it kills Definitely. the community yeah. there's so much gatekeeping it's unreal. There's so much gatekeeping like it's the worst genre for it like yeah. i love the genre but the fans are fucking Shit. deplorable like yeah. at best like some of them like it's specific like groups as well. Did it's you just give me a five minute is our account. Me? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm I'm I am coming from Glasgow to do this podcast. You're all telling me five minutes. I'll fucking knock you off, you cunt. Exactly. I'll, I'll just whip out my knife. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a story about a knife later as well. It's quite funny, actually. Um, <laughs> so, what was I saying? So, yeah, elitism within metal is like obviously huge and it's fucking annoying. Obviously, there's shit bands, and I'm I have no problem calling a band shit. Um, What's shittest band? Shittest. That's hard. Quo. Off top of your head, status quo. <laughs> status quo. Within metal community, yeah, probably like disturbed or some shit. It's bad. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
Oh. Are you going to do me like that? I like... Uh, what do you mean, do you like I love Disturbed. I know. You're a fan of No, I like that. I like that. song. I like that. Fucking uh, Liberate. No, there's that one. It's like, oh, my heart is stricken. I can't <laughs> let you... That one's, that one's off Guitar Hero, though. That one was sick. But then there obviously is that one, The Sickness, the biggest yeah. meme. Uh, you, you've ever. also got, like, Five Finger Fuck Punch, as I call them. Um, five, yeah, not really five, into that. Yeah. Like, it's like, don't you dare bring Power Trip into this conversation, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> 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 nah, big up power trip. Do you know? Do you know what? <laughs> no, talking about like power trips. You know what the best power trip is in like the metal community? What? Wear a t-shirt for a band that you don't even like. Oh, and then as soon as someone goes, you don't even know that band. Just go, yeah, because they're fucking shit. <laughs> watch the mind. Just go. Why are you wearing the t-shirt? That is like, one of the ballsiest moves you can pull. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I mean, metal community is pretty rough uh, for like gatekeeping, as you say. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't call your music shit um, anymore. I would have maybe <laughs> five years ago. Um, but you listen to what you listen. Like I don't even listen to the most heavy shit ever. Like. Yeah, I'm kind of tame to some people that I know, but obviously it's not to you guys. But fucking, fucking different I, strokes for different folks. I, I listen to Infant Annihilator. Give me your stroke. <laughs> Infant Annihilator. I, I listen to Black Tom. <laughs> He's saying peace. Stop. Or giving us a two minute warning. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to all the heavy stuff. I love you, know. Oh, I right. go on name a few. You on about Poppy by any chance? Don't, <laughs> don't ask questions. Don't ask, Don't ask questions, big man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit more intimidating. That's a bit more, you want to fight, big man? Yeah, there's no technicality to the heaviest stuff I listen to. It's just fucking opens, like, just slow as shit down yep. tempo, and I love it. It sounds so, clutch. So I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of misconception with the whole um, technicality or its speed. It's fucking brutal. It doesn't necessarily mean shit. Being able to play somewhat slow for longer... Is a yeah. lot harder than just blast beating them. Yeah, fun. yeah. Uh, to be honest, I much prefer like a slower, like heavier track than I would like a just fucking <laughs> all the way. Oh, through, well, like, I heard you, you mention in the podcast like the the Doom Band uh, Portal. Yeah, did I've you listen to them? They sound a bit gimmicky to me, uh, just with the whole face mask thing. I'm yeah. not really into gimmicks. Yeah. Uh, uh, it puts me off. I, fuck, I, I really enjoyed them. Yeah. I'd more more so for the gimmick than you I You can hear it here as well. I hate Slipknot. Like, I think they're just gimmicky. And they've become radio rock. Like, yeah. No, they the, have, yeah. The fans will also, like, they're some of the worst fans in the world. Mm. I thought he was giving us another one. I was yeah, he's, he's, point, he's, point, he's pointing fucking gun at us. Right. Fucking stop it. <laughs> fucking stop it. <laughs> The Spanish man's yeah, gone mad. To wrap up. Anyway, um, so we're going to cut it here, go to a bit of an ad break. I don't even know what ad break's going to be this week. We'll fucking figure it out. Uh, but yeah, ad so uh, join us back for a second um, and we'll be returned. Swag. Hello. Uh, we're quickly just doing an ad break now. Um, just to say, um, drink your water. Um, stop the video right now. Stay stop hydrated. the podcast right now. Get hydrated. Go get yourself a nice glass of water, a nice bottle of water, and stay hydrated. It is important. This is your water stop. So yeah, go get some water. Get yourself get it a from the tap. It costs fuck all a taste, <laughs> a piss all water, <laughs> pure water, pure water. water. <laughs> Anytime I want it, day and night. Anyway, back to the episode. If you don't carry on, fucking being pretty this episode. Oh shit. Fuck. Luke's definitely a... Uh, now you've just, you just given it the, the worst <laughs> person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was like the worst trade-off in history. Like, <laughs> This has been the worst trade deal in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Donald Trump of trade-offs. Hello, we are back. Welcome back to the Iron Lung Podcast. Uh, Leo, boys, stop fucking... He's loading <laughs> stop it. Stop loading that gun you did. <laughs> uh, George, you want to crack out second beer of the week? I thought oh, he was going to ask him to crack out his this is um, Brewdog and Friends uh, subscription box. I got it for three pound ninety five. Special deal, Ooh. eight beers. Ooh. And this is Tony's Hopalone. It's a white chocolate and raspberry milkshake IPA. Well, Tony's is that really expensive chocolate, isn't it? Yeah. From Amsterdam. Amsterdam. And I've got Doom Bar Zero because I'm a fanny. Yeah. You're not a fanny. <laughs> nah, full send it. Fuck Luke, I don't want to give him any beers. Ooh, so yeah, so we're going to pop this open. What do you reckon? Oh, no, I'm not sure. Oh, he's on camera, he's on camera. He's on camera. Nick, come and say hello. Please. Come and say hello. I'll rub your penis. <laughs> <laughs> so, Panda, what has been the hardest part of being sober? Every day, man. Um... You're asking him to <laughs> crack a can. <laughs> yeah, you're all like on, drinking man. alcohol. I drank the zero percent one like before. Yeah, no, you, I don't mind being around people. Yeah, drinking. it's like me um, like when I, every time someone asks about vegetarianism to me, they're like, "Do you mind if we eat this in front of you?" I'm like, I really couldn't give a fuck. 
Oh, I just like my girlfriend. She's vegan, yeah. but she doesn't give a fuck about other people eating. Like, I mean, you I'll segue know. into the ketoism for you. Um, <laughs> when we first met, I was on keto, which is like purely animal yeah, products. Yeah, you shouldn't have been on ketamine, man. <laughs> Ketamine's bad for your kids. Don't do it. Um, and she's vegan, so it's complete opposite di- um, diets. But yeah, uh, the hardest part about being so- sober is like, it doesn't get much easier. People might say it does, but there's always going to be cravings there. There's always going to be days or nights where you're like, I could really do with a drink. Especially because I, I used to use alcohol uh, as a crutch. That was that was my thing. I'd, I'd drink when I was depressed. Well, I'd drink all the time, but I'd drink when I'm harder when yeah. I was depressed. Um, so it's kind of that as well. And then obviously I work in a bar and there's been some interesting rums come through. And rum used to be like one of my choice yeah. of drinks. Yeah. Like I used to drink it by the bottle. No joke, just the bottle. Um, and like I've smelled them and I've just been like, I really want to fucking try it. Like it, there's always that urge there. Uh, Nick's witnessed me nearly drink one and he was like, if you drink that, I'm going to slap you. Uh, good friend, good friend. Good friend. friend. Top he boy. Helps me with sobriety. A lot of people do. Um, but yeah, it's just, you just got to get through it. And I think the scariest part about it now is um, I'm going to be five years sober in October. Wow, it's been that long. Uh, okay, yeah, wow. it's been that long, but it kind of shows how fucked up I was because I don't even know the exact date that was the last time I drank. Yeah. Um, like, in all honesty, like, without going too deep, I don't want to touch too much on it because obviously it's not the most perfect topic that you want to speak about. But mm. it's such an interesting concept to me, like, being sober because it's something I have thought about quite a few times like and you listen to uh, and see a lot in culture like teetotal people straight edge people and I always find it's a very interesting concept not that I say like oh I fucking need to drink I just but I do like a beer but from seeing like we've seen you a couple of times when it's been it's been difficult um, yeah and it's not been yeah. the best and the fact that you're five years sober now is absolutely well, phenomenal man and like yeah. genuinely as, as as a friend and i'm sure these guys will say the same fucking proud of you mate like yeah. you've come a long fucking way so fucking fair play to you man fair play. every day is a battle round still. of a, round of applause Hand the please. you're making me blush motherfuckers <laughs> um, but yeah, um, which is the, the scariest part about coming up to, to five years sober is there's a statistic that um, I think it's 95 or, or it might even be like 99% of all people that make it past the five year point. And if they relapse, it's worse. Uh, it? It's going to be what kills them. Yeah. Um, they're not going to get sober <clears throat> purely because they think, oh, well, I've already done it once. I can do it again whenever I want. Hmm. Um, I was watching Steve Oz's podcast and the guy who got him sober was the one who was explaining it. So it scares the shit out of me. Like, it is a really worrying thing. He's like, what if I get past that point and do end up relapsing? Um, am I going to be fucked? But I try not to think about it too much because the more, the more you think about it, the more you are inclined yeah. to, to have a drink. Yeah. Uh, it more, the more it's like, it's kind of that demon on your back, which is a generic term, but yeah. like, it's true um so yeah five years sober is, is scary but it's good and i'm still i'm still at it so yeah i mean the one time i accidentally had alcohol it was a sip because we was at a bar and i'd asked for an alcohol beer or a, like cider thing um or I, I drink low alcohol as well like so the difference between is literally like 0. 0.5 uh so like to be alcohol free it has to be 0. 0.0 up to 0.4 i think it is five i think well five, five yeah, once it hits that five yeah. mark it's classed as low alcohol but you're not going to be able to get drunk off it yeah so that's why i feel safe drinking it <laughs> yeah. a lot of a lot of other alcoholics or recovering alcoholics can't do that because it makes them want to drink um and it comes from like it's modesty so i've got a really addictive personality as you know like i, I smoke a lot which is ironic coming on the iron lung i might end up in <laughs> one of them fuckers one day um <laughs> But yeah, so like I I can't really do things in modesty. I struggle. So there's like a lot of things I need to do, avoid doing. So like yeah, definitely. I've been bad on drugs before as well, and had to to pull myself off them because anything addictive, I'm fucked. Like I just there's no modesty. I don't know why I don't have that modesty filter. It's just something in my brain. I'm guessing yeah. just a glutton. Hence why I'm a fat fuck. <laughs> um, so like hench fuck more like oh no fat fuck. Um, <laughs> So yeah, like I think that's what it is. I think that's the biggest thing. And like, I, like I say, I'm pretty scared to hit the five year mark. But I saw, saw it's a big achievement, and I don't yeah. really achieve much in my life. Like I've fucked a lot of shit up through alcoholism. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, and I'm still at no, it. So, um, mentioning that briefly, obviously you touched briefly on like having that demon on your back and constantly thinking about that 
relapse if ever did happen. It's it, I have a very similar instance of that with with my mental health and my bipolar yeah. because um, it's it's a mad feeling because it also feels like there's constantly a second person that can take charge yeah. like with my bipolar and with it being episodic you're kind of waiting constantly for that next that next episode to come on and you're thinking fuck is it going to happen and the, the always hardest bit for me is knowing and feeling that decline like yeah knowing that you're going into that like that uh, depressive episode but i kind of learned like over the past couple of years the best way to deal with that is to just think like fuck it like try not to think about it like because i spent so many years thinking when's it gonna happen when's it gonna happen when's it gonna happen and it's really hard to then turn it off and just be like don't think about it and it that's one of the hardest things it's like to come to terms with myself is that like just fucking just forget about it and you can't always forget about it well i think the perfect thing to do is find a happy medium between forgetting about it as well as not completely ignoring it because if you completely ignore it it can just take yeah, you by surprise yeah. and you've got to appreciate it though as well like yeah. it's, it's something that you're struggling with something that's going to be there you've got to not just neglect it you've got to appreciate it and not not cherish it in a way because that's a weird way to look at it but you've just got to understand that that's something that you've battled with and that's something you've got to stay focused on and, and keep yeah because it's, it's always going to be there that's yeah. the thing so th- i think this is why a lot of people say you need to treat alcoholism or any addiction as a sickness rather than an addiction yeah um so like mental health um you kind of you, it's an everyday battle but sometimes like with with addiction they'll say you need to hit bo- rock bottom before you start helping yourself yeah and that couldn't be more true like i agree with that sentiment all like it is a great sentiment because when you're in, in addiction or when when you're struggling with with stuff like addiction you don't see it yourself you become the most selfish version of yourself i was a very selfish human being i didn't give a fuck about anyone else really I just gave a fuck about getting drunk. That was my thing. That was just my hang, I'd say. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I like to throw a bit of humor in there. I'm not all that serious. Like I talk about my alcoholism quite a bit to certain people because it intrigues people. Of course, it's going to intrigue people. I was an alcoholic. Um, but yeah, like tr- rather treat it like a sickness or an illness. And you can then f- find, start finding things that are going to help it. Mm. So like you would with a sickness. So say you yeah. have a cold, you'd start using cold and flu tablets so uh, the best thing to do with an addiction is fi- uh, find a healthy addiction so something that's more productive something that's going to get you further in life so uh, mine wasn't that healthy it was smoking again because I'd, I'd not been smoking for two years when i quit drinking mm. started smoking again because some shit happened in my personal life um so it was either and that was the hardest thing because it was really big shit that happened like it was really personal and i was in a low place mm. and i was only weak into sobriety at the time and i rung my brother up like i don't i don't care about admitting this on like i was crying i was in a rough rough patch uh, nick probably knows what i'm going on about here um you might have because you all know me you might all know what the situation is um so i rung up my brother uh crying and i was just i didn't know what to do i said listen like I'm either going to the shop and I'm I'm like I'm gonna go to the shop and get either a bottle of Jack Daniels or a packet of cigarettes. Um, cause that that brother's kind of good with that stuff because he's never had addiction, but like he he's always kind of has like that sober mind, which yeah. is great. Um, he said not to do any, and I went in and I I must admit I was that close to to saying bottle of Jack Daniels, please. But I was just like, can I have 20, 20 cigarettes instead? Yeah. And that's what I did. Uh, but I've started, I've started trying to transition into different like addictions. So now I'm like, I've got my own place with my girlfriend. Um, so it's like collecting things like, because I'm really into horror movies, all the horror movies. So I'm collecting memorabilia and shit like that, which is that's kind of healthy. I'm collecting, collecting records, um, which you might say it's not healthy because you're spending money, which is true. Uh, so I try not to go too overboard with it. Don't spend too much money on it. Uh, I started reading, which I never thought I'd fucking do. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> dumb guy. Um, so yeah, but it's just healthy addictions. But it's like you said, with si- any kind of illness, yeah, um, you've got to take it serious. You can't completely blank it. I always know there's going to be that little thing in the back of my head, just like it's just one drink. Yeah, which is never one drink. With your bipolar, you can't completely ignore it because yeah. if that creeps up on you, you're fucked. Yeah, because yeah. it's just a he- heavy decline from there. Um, so yeah, but I appreciate where you, how you see 
where my mind oh, comes from on that one. Yeah, hundred percent. Like oh. I, I constantly think <coughs> about it. It's constantly on the back of my mind. But yeah, you, it's it's learning to overcome it, and it's just, it's exactly what you said. It's finding ways to 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 target it and sort of counteract it. Like the gym was a massive thing for me. Like yeah. obviously, I've been probably since like covid started like so i'm a bit podgy now but the gym was so helpful to me music was massive yeah yeah healthy addictions 100 um, percent. and music was such a big thing for me and um, we touched on it the other episode <coughs> this has been fantastic for me because i've been so up and down in lockdown and at a point where i just didn't really know what to do with myself anymore because i've lo- I lost all my things that i yeah. do to keep myself going and that's but that was one of the hardest things to deal with during lockdown this has been absolutely phenomenal for me like just getting to just be that exaggerated version of myself yeah. again like it's fantastic um i have an interesting question on on that one second sorry for getting heavy as shit no, no, <laughs> no, no. um i'm gonna clip all this by the way because i i really like this this conversation if that's okay with you like, yeah of course clip, and if, if if i'm ever down and you want it, like down here and you want me on the podcast to talk about any uh, where i am with my addiction or oh 100 yeah anything else yeah. on that you want to do a specific episode i'm I will come Yeah, down. definitely. I could speak about this for ages and exactly. because it's yeah. obviously not a specific one. But yeah, we'll, we'll schedule that in because I think they're really helpful. Um, and I think that really helps some people at home that are struggling with mental health and are struggling with um, alcoholism, especially through lockdown. Like, I mean, it's really interesting. Especially interesting through lockdown, I think people just need to remember better days are ahead. And I think that's what kept me going. Yeah. Um, 100%. I, had, I needed to, to work towards something because it was rock bottom. I hit rock bottom. Like, so I was suicidal. Sorry, I'm going to end up going a bit heavy. No, no, again. no, it's fine. So I was suicidal, but um, as a lot of people know, I'd never used to talk about my feelings. I'd never opened up. I'd help other people, but I would never do anything to help myself. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I was very suicidal at the time. Uh, and I, like the, the last night I got drunk, I don't remember doing it, but I remember ringing my dad. Like my, my dad telling me the day after that I'd rung him up and told him that I was going to end it. And that's where it got real to me. That was that was the last night I got drunk because I was then letting them emotions out, and everyone knew it. And I was probably very close to to suicide at that time. So um, yeah, I think that's that was the push that I needed. Sometimes you just need a kick in the ass, and that I'd say yeah. that was my rock bottom. Um, but remember, folks, like the only way is up. COVID's gonna disappear. The you've got to just fight through shit because mm. I mean, I found someone that I love and cherish during COVID. Like there's things there. You just need to focus on yourself and remember you, people love you. People love you and you're going to get through that shit. Yeah. No, I really appreciate you sharing that. It was my really, really deep, man. I really, again, really sorry for getting heavy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think you've, at all. You, you've got to share that stuff. And I think it's really important that you, that you have shared that. And I think hopefully someone's listened to that and you know, <coughs> took something from that. I really appreciate it. I think, as 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 a set of friends there's quite a few of us that that deal with that mental health well so maybe not alcoholism as much but of course like it's it's a similar concept um i can count out pretty much most of us have dealt with really severe mental health at some point one way or another um you know speaking to somebody i won't mention any names um but i was speaking to one of our close friends recently who was really struggling um I, i'm probably sure i'm sure most of you know who it was but i won't mention names um, and they were saying sort of like, I say, I'm done. And I sat and spoke to them for like an hour, two hours. And I said, look, like, you've got to the end of this pandemic now. It's only going to get better. What are you thinking about now? Like, why at the end is this the time you want to give up sort of thing? Like, Yeah, you just need to find yeah. something for them to focus on. Yeah, and we got there and he's doing better. And I'm I'm, pr- I'm proud of him. And I'm, I'm proud of you for coming on and sharing that. I'm proud of the person you are and where you've come from. Like, I'm really glad you're still sat here. At I'm, a, I'm a very different man than I was five years ago, two years ago. It's, it's all about change. You've just got to yeah. get yourself better. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. Thanks for opening up. Yeah, no, I pre- no really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to transition here um, and target that with something that I'm quite interested to see because I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, can you get your um, arm out, please? <laughs> My arm? <laughs> your arm. Which we arm? are uh, doing Inking It with Iron Lung. It's oh. time to speak about Inking It with Iron Lung. Uh, we did it last week. We had a very interesting uh, tattoo on last week with Scott Jenner. He has a Ryan Dunn tattoo. Uh, uh, what was it? Fr- uh, five plus four five equals Five plus nine. four equals nine on oh, his he's foot. He's a great tattoo. Yeah, he's fucking great tattoo. fantastic. <laughs> um, so in- his foot like there. Yeah, yeah, like, it's oh, fucking quality. Good choice. Um, and obviously... 
you have a lot more tattoos than Scott, and uh, your sleeve um, is one of the most interesting pieces of art I've ever seen. Because it's it's not anything that I've ever seen on anyone else. It's very you, and it's very me. Yeah, like and that's what I went with with this sleeve. Like on my left arm, it's kind of a bit more generic. My right leg, it's a bit more generic. But yeah, my right arm, I I probably can't get all of it out because of the t-shirt. Unless you want to see my fat gut, you might need to blur it out. <laughs> it might blind everyone because I'm very fucking white. Um, but yeah, I'm more than welcome to get it out for you. Does it need to go on camera? Uh, well, we could. We, if you don't want to. Okay, so I'll show you half of my arm. I yeah. can't get all uh, of it out. Lewis, do you want to bang over here with let's have a gandhi. So how would you, how would you describe it? Because to be honest, I really wouldn't know what if I was going into a tattoo shop. I, w- I don't know what sort of sort so, of. First of all, of I've not shaved my arm, so it doesn't look as good. It pops. Do you shave your arms? Uh, no, just because I don't have boss sleeves. But when I have boss sleeves, I will because it makes t- tattoos pop a hell oh, of a lot more perfectly. than they are. Um, so it's like graphic novel style. Um, I don't think you can just go in and ask for it. Like it just happens that the tattoo artist that I got. Um, has very much the same mind as me. Um, so, like, I didn't want colour. I uh, don't know if you know that. I never wanted colour. And I then when I got my first that, no. piece, my uh, panda, um, there's a lot of intricate line work in that. And he said, if you pop a little bit of colour, it was just a tiny little bit of, it was like an aura kind of green Yeah. around it. Um, I'll get. I'll send him pictures so you can pop them up. Mm. Um Wow, look at wow. that tattoo there. It's, it's beautiful. Still beautiful. Draw, what do you think of that one? <laughs> it's fucking sexy. <laughs> fucking hell, there's a lot of colour on that one. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Fucking hell, put it away, lad. So yeah, um, I didn't want colour, uh, but it was like, it's going to make it last a hell of a lot longer because of the line work if you pop a bit of colour in it. So I was like, yeah, go ahead, just pop a little bit in. And then I moved on to my leg. Like I did half my leg. It took me a while to get that done. Uh, and then we moved back onto the arm and you, I was just like, just fucking go wild. Like, <laughs> Fuck me up, bro. Just put as much color in there as you can. <laughs> so, like, up here, like, is probably one of my favorites on this arm. It's, um, I don't know if you've seen it, the heart, like, the pig thing with the cleaver. No, I have seen it. I, I have, have seen, seen it. it. Yeah, so, like, it's, it's all red sick. and shit. Um, so, yeah, it's like a graphic novel style, but it's just, like, because I, I like comics and shit. I'm a bit of a nerdy fucker. Um, You're on the right podcast, man. I'm on the right <laughs> podcast, yeah. As long as we don't talk about wrestling. We're <laughs> Fuck <wrestling>. off. <laughs> Not again. So, yeah, um... It's like graphic novel style, but it's like horror graphic novel yeah. style. So like, it's just wild, and his, yeah. his mind just seemed to have clicked, and it, it got it. So the, I think the weirdest thing for the people at home that obviously can't see the rest of your sleeve and stuff. Um, if you're just saying to them, oh, "I've got a panda up here, I've got a pig here," you'd just be kind of like, "That's pretty much." You'd be confused. It's like, very fucking like they're all shredded and like gored up to fuck, aren't they? Like, yeah. So like the, the only boom. one that they would have seen there is um, the, the the like were fox thing. So, like, it's not a werewolf. Like, I love foxes. And I told him, like, I just want a fox. Like, I don't give him much direction. I just say to him, like, with this arm, I just said to him, like, I want this animal. You've got artistic freedom. Because I knew he was going to bang it out. And he fucking smashed it. Like, so, like, that's not a wolf. It's like a fox. And then, like, I've got the, the goat like, thing, which is gnarled up and shit. Um, yeah. Fucking yeah. sucks getting color, though. Because, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Color doesn't go in as easy as like black and grey. I'm sure you know because you get trad styles uh, or like neo trad. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Th- it's not hurting. It's just it takes oh, a lot more sessions. Right? For yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I know. What so you're like, yeah, yeah. have you had your inner bicep done yet? It fucking sucks, right? Man, it was fucking awful. awful man, right? it was shit. So the first time I got it done, my arm swelled up that much. It just stopped taking ink in. Yeah, and he was like, I can't carry on because it's just not going to take anything else in. And I was like, all right, cool as fuck, whatever. Went in for the se- second session and did it. But so I had to have like multiple sessions on my inner bicep. I really? wanted to fucking kill myself. <laughs> like, yeah. we won't joke too much about that. But um, yeah, so like it just fucking sucked. The back of my leg sucked as well. My calf. Yeah. Have you had your calf done? Nah. nah uh, yeah, it's not pleasant. That, yeah. that was, but over the night, it's been fine. But yeah, yeah you've got to have way more yeah. sessions. Mate, that one was an absolute bitch, mate. Uh, it's also my favourite though, but I have a lot of stretch marks up the top of my arm, and he blasted over him, which I really appreciate. But it, I don't even know where were the worst. Probably like here, like yeah, up there yeah. Wasn't, so it gets it, really like it feels like it's warm. Yeah, and it's fucking it was pinching. Very nippy up here, but yeah. it wasn't as bad as what I anticipated. But the the process as a whole, shit, I hated it. But Kenyon, <laughs> but Kenyon um, blasted it out in like three hours. It was a piece of piss. Like he just, Kenyon's a disgusting. Kenyon works at a, a, like a good rate. Yeah. Like, so Ken, who I got to, 
he's a bit slower, but he nails lo- the work, and I love yeah, his work. Yeah. I, I was trying to actually get a session um, up, coming yeah. down this week, yeah. um, and he was going to try to fit me in, but there was just no sessions available, so yeah. which kind of sucked. Yeah, because it's been it's been the longest I've gone without getting a tattoo. It's yeah. over a year, which fucking sucks. But because um, I need to move on with my arm and then just carry yeah. on with more pieces and fucking. I want to be covered. So. Have you had any tattoos done up in Glasgow? No, I've only been had to any? Kane. You need to go get yourself down to King of Bones, mate. I'm, I'm essentially go. looking at it like because I said to Kane, like I, I only really like going to him because I've got a trust. Like I trust him. I know he, he, he knows my wavelength when it comes to tattoos. Like I know I can give him like kind of a brief, mm. very small brief. Leave it kind of open and just say Art- artistic freedom's yours, mm. and he's gonna nail it. Um. So like I I don't know it's like when I've got a barber I, I feel like I've got to be loyal to them but I said to him yeah. I said to him like I, I don't know if I'd want to go to a, an artist up there and he was like dude there's so many sick artists in Glasgow go yeah. to another artist yeah. so we're gonna I'll, I'll I'm probably gonna look around and yeah. then try books I and I feel like King of Bones is your sort of style as well because it's that sort of like Renaissance like dark work so maybe not into the sleep but definitely a little piece on somewhere you've got a blank spotlight I think that is something you really like like some really like old yeah. school like I think, type you, shit. I think you've shown me a couple of his yeah, pieces and I've really f- liked them fucking so. sick to be fair man I cannot wait to get tired of him it's gonna be so fucking good I can't wait I was gonna say you two don't have any tattoos yet but you do don't you yeah, does. I've got one as well I've got one well, as well. Uh, it's like a fucking trad heart and a rose just here. Oh, should we get it out or should we save it for our own inking it <laughs> episodes? I can send you a picture to throw up if you want. No, I'll save it for our own okay. Save it for your own episodes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to... Um, oh, actually, we'll segue that. Because uh, I haven't asked you this question yet and it's something I'm really interested to, to ask you. Um, obviously, it's a staple in... Uh, to, uh, when we have guests on now to ask, what's your five-track Desert Island EP? But before we touch on that... We're going to do a special episode in a couple of weeks when we have some time. We're going to do just me, you, possibly you, if you if you want to come yeah, down. Definitely. And we're going to do a full episode on uh, Inking It and uh, Five Track Desert Island EP. Sweet. And we're just going to speak about that for an hour. So Luke's Inking It will be about five seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah to be fair, <laughs> yeah. mine will probably, be about ten. <laughs> mine will probably be a lot shorter than yours. Because I'll just be like, yeah, this is it, this is it, this is it. And then you'll be like, going all deep about the one you've got. Yeah. Um, but That's yeah. it, when you've got, not got that many, you've got to like... You've got you to stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of stories of mine that are super funny. Like uh, like speaking about creative freedom, I remember when I went to Genco last and I didn't send him any ideas because he was in Leeds and I just walked in and was like, got these gaps made, fill them in. And he just went, right, no, he's came back 10 minutes. So I got, draw on this, draw on this, draw on it. Yeah, sick, mate. <laughs> and I just had it done. <laughs> and that I'm going, I'm actually there uh, next Friday or the Friday after. Um, and I'm, I'm doing the same. So I've got this gap there this gap here and then up here that I'm getting done and I've just said I'll come in on the day and just do what you want like fuck yeah. it but he's sick mate he's um, he's so good he's such a nice guy as well I met him at North Lakes Tattoo Convention right yeah, um, yeah. sick guy a lot, of, a lot of artists like especially when you're doing something creative they're gonna love it when you say like you've got freedom um, because it just means they can go where their mind takes them yeah. and it usually it usually creates a much better product 100% yeah like definitely. I find it's like with university, I struggled with like mixing and shit because they tried giving you a brief and it was a very specific brief and it's like I yeah. like kind of just winging it and then like, deciding to do something and yeah and then just like finishing it there and then like I think it's cool as fuck to just have freedom and to flow yeah. it. So. Cool, cool. Um, so I think we're going to extend this episode this week. I think we're going to do a bit of an extension if that's okay with you boys. I know it's like nine o'clock. Are we okay for another twenty minutes or so? So I'm going to. Uh, make a little bit of a break here um, and then I'm going to uh, put a video here of uh, Panda getting shot <laughs> because we're going back to the shooting range and Panda's getting shot this week so I'm going to put this here and then when we come back we're going to have a chat about music so stick around for that right, cool. so we're back again at the Iron Lung shooting range today Panda's opted to get shot all his jo- choice not ours we've got a drone there fucking getting a nice close up this this week so we've stepped up the value, you know what I'm saying? Progression here at the Iron Lung Podcast. We're getting good at this, you know what I'm saying? So today we've got Luke Simmons. Uh, we'd like to come around there and, and say it's Luke Simmons um, shooting Panda today. Uh, so Panda, when you're ready, Luke will shoot you. Are we ready? Yeah. Are you comfortable? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You ready? No, no, no. 
What the fuck are you doing? Why'd you walk? One sec, one sec. I'm putting it right in front of him. I don't want to have this gun. Active reaction. Act it. Yeah, fake YouTube did. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> fucking, fucking Pandy, you're a champion, mate. Fucking fair play. You won't even fucking bother. Right, he's made Do you know what? Iron, <laughs> I'll give that a four. Nine, but <laughs> <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> the reaction's four out of ten, but I rate it seven point five because he's just a fucking animal. Legend. Fair play. So to be fair, Scott's still at the top of the leaderboard. Panda's second, but if you want to get shot in the Lung Podcast, let us know. Fucking, I know many. You're not probably going to get shot, so one of us will get shot. Yeah. But Kenyon's but getting shot, and you're getting I'm shot. Fuck all, you stung a tiny bit. <laughs> back to the back. fucking episode. So, Panda, thank you for getting shot there for us. We are back for the last part of the Iron Lung podcast this week. A bit of a lengthy one this week, boys. Long boy. A bit of a long, thick boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Panda, what are your fi- what is your five-track Desert Island EP? Imagine you are Tom Hanks on Castaway. But you don't have the fucking basketball. You have Wilson. your iPod shuffle. Clipped, clipped to your dungarees, right? The shit one that didn't even there's, have a screen. There's, oh, there's, oh, oh, there's some the octopuses, right? Going <laughs> right behind you. They're ready to fucking scuffle your head, right? <laughs> but you don't matter because you've got the iPod shuffle on. Headphones, yeah. no headphones. Doesn't really matter. Watch Five Track Desert Island EP. I'm probably the worst person to ask this. Uh, so I don't really have like favorite albums or anything. So... Um... Cause I listen to, I kind of listen to all sorts of music these days, but Power Trip, Nightmare Logic, Fresh, Ma- uh, Modern Fresh Masterpiece, Chef's Kiss. <laughs> um, kind of like early Motorhead because they just got me into music, so I can kind of listen to them all the fucking time. Not what? Ace of Spades, though. What's, uh, what track? Track? Song, oh, do you track? want like a specific? Yeah, five yeah. tracks. Yeah, five, five tracks. tracks. Five have, tracks. Doesn't have to be five tracks off that album. It could be five, any Not tracks. Nightmare Logic, then, because that's the name <laughs> of the album. Uh, Executioner's uh, Tax, Swing of the Axe, whatever you want to call this bit of bracket there. Yeah. Rest in peace, Harley, Riley Gale. Um, Motorhead. Uh, I love uh, Overkill, so probably Overkill as an absolute banger. Um... Just give me about a year. Uh, <laughs> um, Any municipal waste on there? Oh yeah, so like probably municipal waste, like uh, fucking sadistic magicians are banger just because the bass intro is fucking unreal. Okay, yeah, right now it's fucking painkiller by um, Judas, Judas Priest. Priest. <laughs> that opening to that album is fucking unreal. Like it's 1990, I think that album came out, and fucking it's just brutal fucking drums in your face and then like screeching guitars, unreal. Mm. Unreal. I never really used to like Judas Priest as well, but I kind of got into them again recently. Uh, so that's a fucking certified banger. Um, Exodus, probably. Toxic Waltz. Like, it's a bit of a comedic song, but it's fucking banging. Like, that old school thrash. Really? Great. How many am I on now? Four? Um, Five, I think. Was that? No, four. 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 You're not uh, okay. suck. Fuck off. One of Your maths are worse than mine, and I failed. Um... <laughs> Oh no. Fucking oh, oh god. No. I've gotta go through like all of the my <coughs> mental library right now. Um I'm gonna do a Scott and bang out like Nelly Furtado or something. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Floor rider. Celine Dion. Maybe uh Prince Purple Rain, because it's just a fucking yeah, banger. Yeah, and banger. you need that thing to s- soothe down to. Purple Maybe a nice song. Like yeah, white yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 He's good. Do you know what? He's got that on vinyl just so he can be like <laughs> crack one out to twelve inch. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you know what well, I'm is. do you know what I'm heavily surprised there? No Lamb of God. Don't really listen to them as much these days, believe really? it or not. Really? I think um, what killed it for me is just when they started bringing out new albums, like, they were really consistent, and then, oh, well, I don't even know the album's name. It was just kind of pish. Um, it's when he started doing clean vocals, which I'm not usually against, but Randy Bly from Lamb of God should not do clean no, vocals. Not what you were used he's, to. He's, fucking, like, he's got rules and shit. So you fell I'd out probably with the put log, some in there as well, because I really love them, but the new album's a bit meh. Yeah. Like, I can take it yeah. or leave it. Yeah. I'm, I'm so surprised there's no longer no. around, mate. It was your motherfucking invitation, mate. The Rob Halford. Fucking hate that, that song anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the Rob Halford is just like. Rob it Halford is like. Fucking it just came from that meme in Nick's kitchen, just like. Wow, when I was singing, singing Pain Killer, Killer yeah, all yeah. the fucking time, like every two seconds. <laughs> like, fucking everyone trying to get you on video doing it. Yeah. No Skepta either. Oh, no yeah. Skepta. I fucking love Skepta, me. Boy, you do love Skepta. You do. I do not. You're lying to your father. No, you love Skepta. You like his ethics. 
What? <laughs> <laughs> also, that water for that wet thing, that's a Scott, that's a Glaswegian thing. <laughs> so like when they're confused, instead of like what is wet, yeah. like I instead of A, it's just fucking weird. And that's kind of just morphed into my fucking vocabulary. Yeah, Lemmy does it all the time when he's shooting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wet. Fuck it. So what, what, um, what, what track order, that, that order that you gave it in? Well, I don't you know. Do? Like, I Prince don't to know. come down right at the end of the night. You're, you're asking like too in depth, like, cause like I said, I never think about this because I listen to like my yeah. music varies. Like I can be listening to like DRI, which is old school crossover to like yeah, yeah. fucking aborted to yeah. dying fetus to cannibal corpse. It all sounds very the same, Robert by Glasper the way. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, Surprise. You just say Warehouse Project. Robert Glasper. Oh, Robert Glasper, which is like Neo yeah. Soul, uh, like jazz. Thundercat, I fucking love yeah, Thundercat. Yeah, sweet. He's done a Coca-Cola ad. Fuck off. Yeah, he done an advert for Coca-Cola. Like one of them new fucking adverts that they got for like Diet Also Coke. a little fact for you, he also played bass for Suicidal Tendency. Yeah, he did, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And quite surprisingly, you do like a bit of um, old school hip hop. You're heavily into sort of um, that old school style in hip hop, aren't you? Yeah, so like I can go from like Public Enemy, um... Like that kind of era, run the MC, um, that kind of like old sc- old school shit, yeah. to like nineties gangster rap, which is like kind of where it ends for me. I still listen to bits and bats, um, like bits and bats of newer stuff, but it's not really for me. Yeah. So like I, lo- I love Wu Tang um, from the nineties. Wu Tang forever. Uh, Wu Tang forever. Um, yeah, there's a few things I yeah. listen to. Like I'm trying to broaden my horizons. Yeah. And um, touching on that, especially your brother is part of or was part of cult still of the, is is he still part he still of is, um, yeah. for the underground fans if you're listening cult of the damned so i don't usually like to name drop so thank you for that leo <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah um so my brother happens to be one of the rappers in cult of the damned which are pretty big in the underground uk scene i like them i, I like that music because it, so um, I believe it was you two. You did a podcast. Um, yes, we're with final uh, resting place. Final resting place with uh, uh, Dapo Barnaby and, and Barnaby, yeah. uh, <laughs> Dapo. Um, if you're watching, boys, we are going to get you on um, as soon as possible. Um, and if you haven't watched that already, go back. Final resting place. It Find is it. a fucking Belt well podcast. good podcast. Yeah. Uh, we talk we a bit too much about crisps. Yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah, fucking yeah. good I mean, that like, though. I think it? that were our episode. We just we fucked up the floor, man. That's yeah. what we do. Yeah, yeah, we just spoke about we're crisps. They, the the crisp, the crisp question is literally they say it's like a minute, two minute topic. Yeah, we, we spoke we, about. We, it I think 10, we spoke. We, they edited it down to like ten. I think we spoke about it for like twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. and then when Mark came on, they edited that out as well because Mark did his, and then we carried on talking about it. Yeah, yeah, because like they brought up the whole salt and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so what? You fucking backtracked me there. So yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. It's what you do. It's what you do. You can't keep an even flaw. Even flaw. I just didn't want to say it. Pearl Jam fucking suck. Um, <laughs> fucking cum. That's, you should just, the band should just be called cum. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope people watching this on YouTube just for that moment. I hope they hear the uh, little... Once, mm. once again, for the, uh, for the, the people at home, please. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah what was the saying um cult of the damned by records yeah so cult of the damned so what i was saying about the, the you two going on that podcast you spoke about uh, a regional accent thing and that you don't really hide it nick's kind of got his actual accent within the music if you listen to cult of the damned do not expect like fake american accents you've got fucking scouse accents in the northern english blackburn like real strong yeah, blackburn, blackburn. Bill fucking Shakes. Londoners, you've got everything in that yeah, fucking man. group. Like it really varies, and I love that. I love that it keeps it real. It keeps yeah. it legit. No one's bullshitting anyone with a fake accent. Yeah. I I have not listened to as much Cult of the Damned as maybe you have, um, but from what I've heard, man, they, they they just sound hard. Like when you listen to them, you're like, I won't fuck with these guys, sort of thing, because they're not they're not putting any sort of anything on on the plate that what they aren't. They're just straight to the point, just like pure, just fucking evil shit. Like no. Nah. So, I, I think uh, so. Yeah, no, so you don't take everything that they say with a hundred percent. Like, take it with a, a grain of salt, salt because yeah. they're, they're it's all... more like a parody sort of thing. So then. it's not a parody. Like, it's not a parody. It's, but like, it's serious music. It's, it's like, serious music, yeah. and there's like the satirical things within it because yeah. some of them have got dark humor, like dark kind of dry humor. So if you've ever heard of the comedian George Carlin, it's like that kind of style. Like, it's really cynical humor. Um, 
So it's definitely serious music, and there's definitely some great lyri- lyrical content within them. So like Tony, um, Tony Brock, for anyone who doesn't know, he plays a character, Tony Brock's the character, and it's just kind of like a bit of a, a, a crackhead. Lout, yeah. yeah, he's like <laughs> just a rowdy guy. Tony's a good dude. Tony's a really cool dude. Like, he teaches kids and shit. Like, yeah, he's like a youth worker, isn't he? He's a youth worker, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, mad, mad. It's, Fucking mint guy. Yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't take him as, like, they're just good dudes, as long as you're not a dickhead. Yeah. But it's like, like that with anyone. So. When you look at the entire Blood Records roster as well, like, Cult of the Damned, uh, Children of the Damned, obviously, before <coughs> them, before they expanded and let more of the roster on board, mm. they're kind of like that not horrorcore definitely not horrorcore but like well you like, can no, 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 no. kind of get like the, like the eight is enough the big right. l influence you know what i mean like yeah that kind of influence i'm not saying like yeah the, the horrorcore but like they've got that super like hard <clears throat> rap kind of style like i'll go back to big l like that's one of the first things when i heard him i thought this you know like it doesn't sound like big l but i can imagine like these guys appreciate yeah. big l and stuff like that and then like if you look at like the modern roster now um they've got is it Frankie Bones the Italian dude who's just released that like, yeah, it's not super Italian smooth guy. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's, solely hip hop kind of yeah. like vibe it's real different EP, from the label yeah. yeah and then you've got like uh, Danny Lover who's like really like he's not like, like Zand out rap but like really it like kind of is that style out, but like, he's like a Canadian dude yeah like, he's like super like long drawn you've got like Canadian pork into the group yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Danny Lover's from Canada him yeah, and Luke Lucius when when we saw him on tour Luke Lucius came in didn't he that was sweet that yeah, I think he's one of my favourites, actually, Danny Lover. Danny right. Lover's he, he, cool he's good. I need he's to good. Um, go back and listen to I him. Think um, really so like, the, like, what f- was that one track that I remember when you was first telling me about Cult of the Damned and um, and you was there was a track that you told me to listen to and I did really enjoy it, but it was definitely more of that horrorcore vibe. It was, like, it was, really it was probably cool. off the first album, which is Tourette's Camp, um, which came out in 2006, which makes me feel old as is shit. Is that the one with It's Them or is that the EP that came out afterwards? It probably... Um, is them might be off the EP. I don't know the yeah. discography. Like, like perfect. Like, was was Cannibal Ox one of them? No, no. So Cannibal Ox is a separate band who I might have shown you. Yeah, um, yeah. they have an album called. Was, I remember we were speaking about Cannibal Ox, and then we was on a bet. Yeah, the how it's like time. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, there's one really, really good album from Cannibal Ox that I frequently listen to, which is Iron Galaxy. I think it's called. Um, the, like the production on that is like an absolute masterpiece. It's fucking phenomenal. Like insane synths, everything. It's great. That's kind of that falls into like that gritty horrorcore style. Um, there's some pretty fucking dark mm. lyrics in that, but I don't think I wouldn't take everything they say with 100 percent as well. Kind of like. So yeah, I was. <laughs> no, actually but they, gonna, they mean everything they say. They though. mean everything they say. I was actually going to segue over to that because you wanted to tell the story about the photograph. Swag. Um, before we go over to that sweet segue right there, um, your brother, um, obviously shout out him. Like always respected, obviously the boys and whatever. What's a song by him that you'd recommend? And I'll, I'll link it. Anything off his album, so just link his Anything album. Droopy, yeah. So the album's called Droopy. Um, and what's your brother's moniker? King Grub. So he, See, it's King. Even I knew that. Even, he, even John knew that. Uh, so it's Grub, but with two Bs. Um, it's a banger. It's a good album. Um, there's a lot of cool videos as well, so if you want to check it out, like go onto the YouTube. Yeah, I'll, uh, what, what I'll do is I'll link... Um, I'll link uh, uh, to their album, then I'll link a, a music video as well. Yeah. So if you want to check out that and you're into your sort of like underground sort of stuff, um, yeah, definitely check out Cut yeah. Down Light. It's fucking sick. Yeah. Yeah. King Grub, especially. That, uh, they Say track that they dropped with, you know, Bill Shakes and Lee Scott. Yeah, yeah. That's a fucking bad. I always have that on me. Like, yeah. I don't really listen to like much Blah No More like, as much as I used to. But yeah, you used that's to like a track to a that I like, consistently listen to. It's just great. Yeah. Yeah. And anything like Uvavu, if you can get hold of anything like that, like the old uh, stuff, uh, uh, So there's, there's loads of like off. Off albums yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's not necessarily full at all, or like the full group. So like Uvavu's between uh, King Grub, Lee Scott and Spill, uh, Spiller. Oh, like, yeah, I know yeah, him as Spiller, but it's yeah. Bill Shakes to everyone else. Uh, he's he's a man with a million monikers. Yeah, um, kind of like Scrim from Suicide Boys. Fucking uh, all that sort of shit. What <laughs> I like Ruby the Cherry is the best. Spooky the scary. It's That's spooky my favorite. Scary. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, he's a man of many monikers. You might know it, like people might know him by different names. Um, so Uvavu is a project between them three and it is, it is a solid solid project mm. and a lot of people are asking for Uvavu too um, I can't reveal if anything's happening I don't actually know yeah. Um, but yeah like uh, check out check out his album Droopy there's a couple of videos from there he went out to Estonia especially to shoot them Mad. and they're very well done like there's one where they're in like He's in an upside down house. You yeah, check that's, it out. that's a sick video. It's a wild it's video. Cool that, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. He cool. had a good time out there yeah. as well. We'll get it. We'll get everyone else to check it as well. Um, 
I think one of the funniest things from the first episode for me is um, the amount of people that was like, I've spoke to afterwards and it was like, who was you on about? And I thought who everyone would get there, it. Yeah, yeah and every, I thought everyone would get it. And then obviously, like, Scott were on about it to him the other day and I thought he'd get it and he didn't. And he was like, I, I thought it, but we I didn't think it was. It we had to say it. For yeah. To understand it was. yeah. Uh, we did it, after, like, not even during recording, did we? We had to, uh, we oh, just yeah, told him, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Um, but, you was one. Of, you was probably the only person I know that, that got it because obviously, if there was anyone to know, it was. It'd be uh, you. Well, yeah. I was on that, like funnily enough, I was listening to the podcast on the, the way to work, like on the train on the way to work, and as soon as the bleep came, I was like, it's fuck yeah. <laughs> like the instance it was bleeped, I was like, it's fuck. Sorry, it's getting bleeped again. It's getting this. bleeped again, boys. Yeah. You don't know what it is. I do. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 whilst you're on the topic of people not knowing what it means, dahame uh, bunde ondero intkuno. Is that that Spanish word from the first episode? Yeah. That is a That's banger. A that is a banger. I can't remember what it means, though. We, oh. didn't, we didn't say. We didn't say. That was the what Oh, the was that the one that was the one that my, my, my question is to you is, can I? Yeah, sure thing. And I'll tell you what it means after sure the thing. Sure thing, mate. And whilst we're on the topic, let's get Great Carly in for the, um, for Spanish. the uh, Spanish Lingo of the Week. Great Carly, everyone. <laughs> so... If Great call, Lee Lewis. Uh, obviously, it's late on in the episode. Typically, we've got very distracted this episode on multiple things, but you have one prepared ready for us. So, oh, yeah. Lewis Taylor, Great call, Lee. Well, you're probably gonna have to bleep this one as well. No, because it's you're Spanish, saying it's Spanish. Bro. Oh, yeah. I'll so say. It, well, I'll bleep it afterwards when you tell us what all it right, means. All right. So this one is ano coño. And what does that mean? It means it. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Fucking fantastic! That was the right time to bring it in. I didn't know you was gonna say that. No, you said you had a different yeah. one planned earlier. No, yeah, I had two planned before, and then you started talking about that like before we started filming. I was like, yeah, I got a good one here. Yeah, <laughs> fucking, that was a can fucking master. The hear... minute you said it as well, I was just like, he's done it. Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can I hear that again for the people at home? He's yeah. dropped it. Ano yeah, yeah. coño. Ano coño. <laughs> fantastic. Amazing. Great call, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. So yeah, uh, as we say, like um, I'd got, I was talking to Leo about, and uh, I asked him the big question of, have you ever seen the uh, picture of yeah. Seth Puffman, or however you say his fucking name? Uh, Man. I'm, I'm Can I him. just say before? Sorry, I keep getting distracted when I'm speaking like this. We do not condone. Like, like honestly, no. we, we've mentioned it so many though. times. We do not like. It's more of a comedic sort of thing that we're mentioning it. Yeah, we it do kind of not, is within the community. We do not support and we do not condone in the slightest. No. Them guys are fucking idiots. Yeah. Um, no respect, on, no disrespect on the dead there, but yeah. fuck me, them guys are fucking stupid. Well, I'll tell you how I've heard him described before and it's bang on, you'll get it as well. Um, so basically, Le I was talking to Leo and I was like, have you ever, ever seen this photo of Seth Puffman getting his dick sucked while shooting heroin up? <laughs> His answer was no, so I had to find it for him. I found it while I was on the train to work yet again, <laughs> surrounded by kids at night, just searching <laughs> Seth Puffman getting his dick sucked, injecting heroin. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent it over to Leo. Leo, like, Leo was like, what the fuck, man? That dude's crazy. It was the uh, it was the Jack Lee Rennie. It was the Jack Lee Rennie. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it's like, like the setting that he's in. He's looked like he's just finished a uh, fucking show in a dive yeah. bar. Jack Lee yeah. Rennie. Oh, I mean, he's just fucking. It looks there. like he's in this fucking room. Well, not this. Yeah, room. Well, no, he does. He looks like he's in there. Was. Yeah. yeah. Um, Up there. Spooky. So well. yeah, like a couple hours later, because I worked the night shift, I was uh, I was having a, a smoke, and um, fucking Luke pops up on Instagram, sends me the image, and I'm just like. Who the fuck do you think sent it to Leo? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get confirmation that it was. I wish we could throw it up on the screen. Or, I right, wish there we is, could. There is like a technically a sense you just show, like, you just you show the amp stack in the background. Just like cut it out and just zoom in on the amp stack. Should I put something in place of it? What should I put in place of it? I'll, 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 I'll like edit it. a water gun in place of the heroin needle. <laughs> that's really is that, funny. Is that I'm a problem? <laughs> I might no, can ask the problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that's the problem. No, 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 well, there's a censored version of it where you can just see the, like, the top of the head and a bit of her, and you, you can't see his dick. So I, I'll yeah. try and find that, but I think it's more comical if, if, if no, I yeah, edited yeah, some in place of it. Do not self-administer the COVID uh, vaccine. An air pump, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll think of something. I'll think of something. I'll put like a traffic cone there. Hey, fucking hell. Fucking hell. Fuck. 
<laughs> but yeah, um, nice. so the way I've heard like him described is the Gigi Allen of metal. I knew you were going to say Gigi Allen. Do you know who Gigi Allen is? I know the name. I don't know. So you're going to have to do a bit of research when yeah. you finish the podcast just, tonight. Just, um, just, just what? Just like see if you can find a clip of one of his shows. Where yeah, you just basically try himself. and find the final show that he did. Yeah. Um, so I'll explain a little bit like about him. Blading himself. He was like this uh, Nazi punk dude. Horrible human no. being, right? But he used to play him basically just some tighty whities and he used to shit himself and throw it at the audience, inject heroin on stage, beat up his audience, get in fights with his audience. Smear shit all over smear himself. Smear shit all over himself. Cut himself, himself open. Himself open. Sounds just like fucked up Bronson. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. Jesus. And on the last show, like, he just storms out and he's got this, like, fucking military helmet on his head. And yeah. He's just got boots and these tighty whities on. No one saw him again and he was just found dead. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, he went, like, like, really forky as well. Like, yeah, he was a really was weird, really weird dude. He's not a good like, dude. Yeah. Right. yeah, not a great dude, but yeah. an interesting character. Yeah. Fuck. Basically, yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's been a lot of weird forks within the scene and uh, I kind of know about all of them but just because it's fucked. Yeah, but it's just... They're just interesting for it's all the wrong yeah. reasons. So it's like morbid curiosity. It's, yeah. it's what happens when people yeah. are into like serial killer documentaries, well, i.e. me. When you say morbid, right. are we going to touch on like Norwegian black metal? With right. Morbid? I recently <laughs> found some hilarious out about Norwegian black metal and it fucking makes the whole thing even more funny. So if you don't know about Norwegian black metal, like it's the darkest shit ever. Fucking they burn churches and they kill gay people and shit. So here's the thing for you. The corny as fuck anyway. They're just edge lords. They're yeah, the original edge lords. Original edge lords. Uh, wearing the fucking makeup, looking like a clown. Fucking uh, not for me. Juggalo, juggalos. They are basically <laughs> a juggalo. Yeah, yeah. But well, basically, um, well, we've just offended about like ten different <laughs> fandoms. They're all gonna come for us. They could suck for chord. Um, <laughs> if you got a problem with anything, we say fuck you and fucking come and like the video, dislike it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> just don't listen. So no, I do listen. That's what fucking gets traction, doesn't it? Fucking tell your friends. There's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there's this guy who's basically he's a comedian but he also happens to be into metal and he's got a, a comedic black metal band called Witch Taint and they're always going on about how they're the most like hardcore black metal band and the source of this thing. it's all comedy it's absolutely fucking all like ironic what's the, <coughs> huh? what's the dude called I can't remember his specific name but the band's Witch Taint, Witch Taint. Um, they've got a song called Sons of Satan it's ridiculous it's hilarious um but yeah, he was doing a podcast that I was listening to and uh, he explained like the funniest part about it all, like with them burning the churches and being so hardcore against Christianity because it oppresses everyone, was no one in Norway is really Christian anymore. And these churches hadn't been used for about 2,000 fucking years. <laughs> no one was going to church anymore. So they were burning down just derelict b- buildings. <laughs> you hardcore motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Brilliant. Weird, yeah, what's with like, the whole thing where like Morbid got murdered and? Oh right, so you're on about uh, Euronymous. Euronymous. You're on about Euronymous. Yeah, Euronymous. Like, he's got like a mad fucking electronic project now, and like Euronymous is dead, so I don't no, think no, he does. Play. No, which one's <laughs> the No, Euronymous. Yeah, got the guy, electronic who, ki- project, the guy yeah. who killed him is Varg Verkness. Varg Verkness. Yeah. So Vark the band, Vark Vark um, yeah. shit, whatever, forgot the name now. Baby Metal. They, well, yeah, I, Baby Metal. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, so basically, Varg Verkness was in one of the original. Um, black metal bands for some reason i can't remember off the top of my head um yeah that's gone uh anyway um he was one of the ones who was like burning churches and shit but they killed euronymous hey, euronymous had like the record shop where they all used to yeah basically euronymous that's where it all started like, from had, whatever, he basically yeah. started the scene yeah. he helped start the scene i think he was in the band mayhem i might be wrong yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, is yeah, mayhem yeah, that's yeah. the one i know about yeah. so um i think varg joined and then Varg wasn't in Mayhem, I don't think. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know much about Black Metal because I don't like mental. it. But um, Varg took him out to a forest and like stabbed him to death, and then he was in prison for a very long time. He's a fucking oh. nutter. He's got a YouTube channel. It might have been banned now. No, he fucking lured him to his apartment on false pretenses to meet about music. That's the one, yeah. And then, and then fucking he apparently, him. you're honest. Pulled a gun on him or pulled a knife. Apparently, on him, and then he fucking killed him in self defense. It turns out yeah. apparently he killed him because he was gay. Um... Yeah, fucking Some mad, mad shit. Which the not ir- the gay guy, by the way. The Aye. guy fucking killing someone for being <laughs> Obviously. gay. Obviously, the, ir- the, the ir- thing ir- is, you said it, and I shrugged my shoulders like, well, I should have clarified that. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah, not yeah. the, I'm not not the gay guy. The guy who fucking stabbed him. The me. ironic thing about it, kind of, is as well, like if you was to be going against Christianity so much, because Christians are so against gay people, that was probably the most black metal thing he could have fucking done. Be um, gay. Yeah. Being gay, <laughs> yeah, like. 
Um, but yeah, he, he was in prison for a very long time, and then he made a game while he was in prison, uh, which was... He's just a mad racist, basically. Yeah, he fucking like the people you find in Accrington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's just a bit edgier. I thought it was like that one. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I'm sure I've seen him in railway. Yeah, there's people you see in the railway. So, yeah. Um, he, he made this, like, video, like, game where it's about um, keeping European blood pure, which is, like... But he was, like, it's not racist, though. It's racist. It's so fucking um, racist. And then he got this, like, YouTube channel that he started. It's just him usually in, like, some fucking camo trousers, just, like, throwing kicks about and then ranting about racism and how gay, like, being gay is super wrong and shit. He's fucked. Like, yeah. he's just a fucked He's also dude. got a, a fire electronic project. He hasn't. I don't, I, I've listened to, like, two tracks of it, and I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Here he goes again. Here he goes again with that really obscure music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not obscure, it's fucking Varg McK- McKay. Do, do you know what's uh, my favourite YouTube channel ever? The guy that does the sitting and staring. Have you seen that guy? Oh, yeah. He's fucked, you know. Have you seen, have you seen that guy? He, no, just reacts to stupid videos. No, 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 no. Literally, just, wait, there's what? about 600 videos of him literally sat there staring at the camera like this. Have you seen a, like hours, hours? Have you seen the one where, of the dude who's broke into his house yeah, and comes into yeah. the room? So the two episodes that people really speak about. There's the one where oh, like, would he live streams for like long no, periods of time. Even, he didn't use to like. I don't know if he live streams now, well, but, he live streams the one where the but he used to just film videos and he literally does not move, mate. And people was like, oh, he's just fucking like statue. It, people thought it was like, people, yeah, either it was loops, it was sort of doing some witch cult thing, or it was just a stationary image, but. There's two episodes that people really speak about. There's probably a few more now, but the two main ones to speak about is the one where he pisses himself, like on camera, just pisses himself. It's just, like some weird art project. Yeah, it's like some like avant-garde art fucking shit. Um, like and then there's life. one where um, what? Like you're <laughs> <laughs> like just one big really offended. art project. <laughs> Mate, you're the fucking obscure little prick quoting yeah, jazz fusion shit, <laughs> <laughs> punching the dick. Yeah, bloody fucking need that. Kick him in the. <laughs> um, and then there's one where this guy breaks into his house and he's there fucking like just broke in he, 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 he looks in and he goes and he looks at him doing it and he goes fuck he dips out dips back out yeah the guy don't, oh, loo- don't move a muscle because yeah, he don't know does no. he flinch no. No. no I'm pretty sure we can see him in the camera because he'll, he'll have like yeah, he'll yeah, obviously yeah, he, have he, the, have, like, the yeah. uh, he's viewfinder not, he's just not fucking bothered it's, it's creepy man. man is he Russian it's creepy. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. Man. I don't know much about him. I just remember seeing it. Yeah, yeah I remember seeing someone weird. break into your house. You can probably see them on your fucking recording software behind you. And just like, yeah. Yeah, you're just fucking doing it for the culture. Did it for the art, dude. Did it for the art, man. Did it for the culture. There's so much weird shit on YouTube. My favorite is a channel called Apator, like Ape T O R, and he's like this. I think he's Finnish. He just drives around this old beat up Volvo on some land, like usually like ice over fucking ponds, downs of like a liter of vodka, and just goes ice skating. <laughs> There's some yeah. weird shit on YouTube. Speaking of Finnish, Helvetia, Berkeley. Oh, there you go. Carry on. What does that mean? The both kind of like swear words in Finnish. Oh, um, what do they mean? Uh, so Berkeley is like the great aunt or some shit of Satan, and then Helva is basically hell. Nice. If I remember rightly, I used to watch a lot of the dudes and yeah. um, basically finished jackass. Uh, if yeah. I'm gonna leave you with um, a video to go watch that'll creep you the fuck out, how about no? Obey the walrus. Oh, Ooh, that, that's, shit, that's, that's kind of tame these days, my dude. Nah, he's still freaky. He's still freaky. Nah, dude. Why, what would you say? I want to watch something creepy when I go on. Well, I don't know. I, I don't really watch like YouTube Slender so much man. these days. Slender, Slender, Slender man. man. Slender man. Do you remember, when, do you remember, when, Mar- do you remember when Marble Hornets did that, that whole was thing? Sweet. That was fucking yeah, that sick. That was really good. There was um, another one as well, uh, like one of those little mini series, just to wrap this up, where it was like that girl um, in a room. She used to do like reviews of like toys and shit like that. Like not a girl. She was like teenage girl. But like it was just like this. That would still be a girl. Yeah, yeah, it would still be a girl. <laughs> you she's a girl. T- you're such a girl. Uh, so anyway, she's in her room. She's like, she builds up this entire fan base and blah blah blah. And then all of a sudden, she like goes missing or something. And it's like they planned it from the start that it was going to be like a series and it wasn't going to be real. Have you never heard of it? Like, a, like I can't remember what it's called. But it's like, yeah, it's like an alternate reality show. But if you if you fall, if you, I, I don't know how I found out about it. Yeah, if, if you, you can fall find down it, the Marble like, Hornets route and like look into that, it's like one of those like. AR, yeah, right, type right, things. Right, um, where it was like reality. properly like looked real as fuck, and then all of a sudden she like started acting really freaky, and like people were like really concerned for her well being. Yeah. Like, oh mate, find but that. But it turned out it, I can't remember what it were, but I will find, find it, it and I will me. bring it up, um, and we will link that. And I will leave one last thing. One of the scariest pictures I've ever seen in my life, and I don't know why, but it fucking terrifies me. There's um, a thought you can find if you can Google it. It's called Satan Sphinx. They think it was. Uh, it's it's a screenshot from Juno you know, the. Um, the American um, fucking thing they did, the um, 
the mind control shit they did. That, oh, yeah, um, Ultra, that. Ultra, uh, yeah. MK, Ultra. MK Ultra, Ultra yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you want to see something for freaky, go and find that. Anyway, screen, yeah. no, I'm not putting it on the screen. <laughs> anyway, this is the end of the episode. Thank you so much, Panda, for joining us. We really no appreciate problem. it. Thank you, pal. Always wear your coat in the rain. Good night. Peace.